Okay, so let's talk about this symbol in mathematics. So we have what is commonly known or commonly kind of interpreted as an exclamation mark. So we use this in like an English language, like the word help. So maybe some of you want to scream that word when you look at mathematics. You'll be like, help, help, help me, please. So maybe this video has to do with uh, screaming numbers, right? Are we talking about saying numbers very loud? Well, no, not exactly. Although that could be interpreted because we <laughs> see this exclamation uh, mark here, this symbol. But it's uh, this symbol, okay, although it's the same symbol, has a completely different meaning in mathematics. And it has to uh, do with seeing how numbers can get very large uh, very quickly. Okay, so you'll, well, this is a little bit of a hint on what this exclamation symbol is going to do to any particular number that it's behind. Now, um, just out of curiosity, how many of you out there know the value of this? Okay, and by the way, we are talking about something called factorial so this is a little bit of a hint now um, a lot of you could just you know do a quick uh, search on the internet and be like okay this is what this is but I'm just curious right now do you know what this means you're like oh yeah okay I, I understand this symbol and I've seen this in mathematics now if you haven't seen it don't panic don't worry I'm gonna give you a quick crash course on this but we use the factorial um, notation this function in mathematics for uh, our study of probability and things like permutations, combinations, and probability, and statistics. So if you intend on taking any of those uh, courses later down the line, you'll certainly see this. But as you progress in mathematics, like even at the Algebra two level, college algebra level, you're going to run into this symbol. So stick around for a couple minutes. I'm going to give you a quick crash course on this, and you're going to see exactly why numbers get so large very quickly when we learn about factorial. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But uh, if you are frustrated uh, in mathematics, maybe you want to be yelling this word, help, help. Do you need help in math? Well, listen, um, I've been teaching math for decades. I really um, try to stress teaching math in little bite-sized, clear and understandable components so anybody, everybody can understand this stuff. So if you don't feel like you're getting the right kind of instruction or enough instruction, I can help you out. So if you're at the middle school, high school, even college level, in mathematics, I can help you succeed in your respective math courses. Now, if you're preparing for any test that has a math section on it, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, ACCUPLACE, or CLEP exam, teacher certification exam, you get the idea. I could help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, you absolutely must check out my full homeschool math program. And if you don't have any math notes, I'm gonna leave links to my notes in the description of this video. But if you want excellent uh, grades in mathematics, you must take excellent notes. So improve your notes and your grades will uh, uh, improve as well. Okay, so we're talking about factorial. Again, if you know the answer, 7 factorial, put that into the comment section. But let's get into it. And this is not that complicated. Okay, so what is factorial? Well, let's start off. Uh, of course, I have some examples here. But let's start off with this uh, easy example for factorial. Okay, so this is, we say this factorial. So this is 4 factorial. This is 5 factorial. And uh, this is 5 factorial, 0 factorial. We'll get to the rest of these here in a second. But this is how we pronounce this little um, uh, symbol in mathematics, okay? Now, what does it mean? Well, uh, you could see it being uh, demonstrated right here. So the number, if I have four factorial, I'm gonna start with the number four. I'm gonna start counting down integer values uh, from this number, four, and I'm gonna uh, multiply four by all the numbers that are less than four. Okay, so these are integer values. So we start at four, we go down by one, that's three, we go down again by two, we keep going until we reach one. So four factorial is gonna be four times three times two times one, which of course is 24. Now, if you have a scientific calculator, you may not have this function on your a basic scientific calculator. You certainly have it on something more advanced like a TI-83 or TI-84, anything that's a graphing calculator, you'll have this, so you need to uh, learn where that's at. Typically, it's uh, in that math function, and you'll have to scroll over to the probability section, but 
if you are going to be taking more advanced mathematics, you need to learn um, how you can uh, evaluate factorials on your calculator. Okay, so you could always do a, a search on that, but again, you know, some of these more advanced calculators, it's not so obvious where to uh, how to plug this in. But uh, you can definitely do it on these graphing calculators. Okay, all right. So here we have four factorial. It is equal to 24. So let's take a look at 5 factorial. What is that equal to? Well, uh, again, we're going to start with this number, 5, and we're just going to start counting down. 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. This is 5 factorial, so when I do this entire product, I'm going to get 120. Okay, so here, I'm going to do 5 factorial again. We know the answer is 120, but this time I'm going to do it a little bit differently. So I'm looking at 5 factorial. I see it's 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. But look at this part of 5 factorial. Okay, isn't this the same as this? Okay, uh, of course, when we look, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, by definition, is 4 factorial. So really, 5 factorial is the same thing as 5 times 4 factorial. So if I know the answer for 4 factorial, which I already know, it's 24, and I'm trying to figure out 5 factorial, well, that's just 5 times 4 factorial, or 5 times 24. Again, 24 was 4 factorial, so 5 times 24 is 120. Okay, so keep that principle in mind because we're going to use this, how we can uh, help um, simplify factorial problems by knowing kind of a, um, you know, a, a subset of the numbers involved in that particular factorial. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about here in a second. All right, but we need to go ahead and define what zero factorial is, okay? So some of you are like, well, what's zero factorial? Well, that is one, okay? And one factorial is one as well. But if you come across zero, zero factorial is, by definition, one. All right, let's take a look at some more examples here. All right, now I said that numbers get uh, quick, uh, large, pretty quickly here, uh, very rapidly. So take a look at five factorial. So 5 factorial is 120. I don't have 6 factorial here, but look from 120, that's 5 factorial. We're just jumping up to 5, 6 to 7. 7 factorial is 5,040. So we went from 120 to 5,040. So that's a pretty rapid increase. And again, if we take a look at 7 factorial, it's 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So here... This part of 7 factorial is 5 factorial, right? So this is 5 factorial right there. So let's take a look at this again, okay? So 7 factorial, um, actually, I'm going to kind of break it. I'm going to kind of um, do this a little bit differently. Let me scoot this down here. So just to kind of satisfy that 7 factorial is the same thing as 7 times 6 times 5 factorial, you could see that in action. Just get your calculator out and double check this math, but you'll see how it works. So that would be seven times six times five factorial, which again is 120. Okay, so if you did this, you would get the same answer. Okay, so you always want to keep that in mind, but now here is kind of what I want to show you next is how we can simplify problems like this. So let's have, uh, let's say we have seven factorial divided by four factorial. So instead of doing seven factorial, figuring that whole thing out, that's quite a bit of work, right? That's 5,020. And then we divide it by four factorial. And of course we know what four factorial is. That's 24. We could kind of do it that way, but there's no need to do all this work. What we can do is say, okay, seven factorial, that's seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. So really at this point, once we um, at four, okay, this is, let me kind of go up here just to make sure none of you are confused with this. Seven factorial, seven times six times five. Anytime along here, I can make this into a, uh, a factorial. Okay, so this is four factorial. So seven factorial is seven times six times five times four factorial. So just to be extra clear about that. So seven factorial, seven times six times five times four factorial divided by four factorial. Okay, I have four factorial and four factorial. These are common factors. So in other words, the whole point I'm trying to make here is you can cross cancel these. And now the answer to seven factorial divided by four factorial is simply seven times six times five, which is 210. 
Okay, so this is kind of an illustration how we work uh, with factorial in various kind of um, configurations and how to simplify. Uh, so if you're understanding so far everything I'm talking about, then, you know, that's just pretty good. I mean, you pretty uh, much know the essence of factorial and some of the basic um, uh, procedures we use to simplify problems with factorial. Okay, so let's talk about 10 factorial. Here's a little quiz for you. Um, so we see that uh, 7 factorial, all right, it was 5,040. And that was a pretty big jump from 5 factorial. So what's 10 factorial? Go ahead and figure this out. Now, I don't care how you figure it out. There's a lot of different ways you could do this, right? So we know it's going to be 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. That is definition of 10 factorial. Okay. Now, if you have a graphing calculator, try to figure out that function. But looking at this, how can you save yourself some time? Okay. Well, hopefully a lot of you out there are saying, well, I can just see right here we have 7 factorial. So maybe I'll go 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 factorial because I gave you the answer to 7 factorial way over here. Okay. All right. So go ahead and figure that out and we'll see how well you've done. Now, if you just want to multiply all these numbers together, it doesn't make a difference. Let's see what you got. Okay, let's take a look at the answer. 10 factorial is 3,620,800. Okay, so you can see how rapid of an increase this is. So factorial, um, you know, this function, you're going to need a calculator to start figuring these things out. These, these jumps are, are very, very big. So um, when you really are using factorial, and figuring out uh, combinations and permutations and things and probability and statistics, you're going to need to know how to um, you know, find and use the factorial function on your calculator. Okay. Now, again, you're going to have to check to see if your particular calculator has this. But if it doesn't have it, if you have a more of a basic scientific calculator, then you're going to have to use some of the tricks and techniques and shortcuts, uh, you know, like, you know, this kind of stuff. Uh, to kind of simplify it. But, you know, if you're in a class that, um, you know, you're doing probability and uh, statistics, then you're probably already going to be required to have a graphing calculator. You just got to, again, find that uh, factorial function on your calculator. But uh, hopefully this little video helped you out. And if you already understood everything here, okay, then I must go ahead and give you a nice little happy face, so a few check marks, an A plus, a 100%. Matter of fact, we'll throw in a good old 1985 flat top uh, just to make you feel extra clean cut for today. Okay, nice job, nice work. Okay, but uh, for those of you out there that are like, wow, I never heard of factorial. Well, you pretty much got the you know a crash course on this. All right, so just remember this. And the next time you come across a number with an exclamation mark behind it, it's not that number being said very loud. Okay. So, uh, but uh, anyways, hopefully this little video helped you out. And if that is the case, go ahead and consider smashing that like button. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, basic math to advanced math, like calculus and everything in between. So if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of the videos I've already posted and will be posting. But my best math help uh, is always in my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.